adversative conjunction Allah, A-L-L-A, which sets up a contrast with the preceding, which uh, says, uh, positive believers, it is the last favorable time, the church age, to use the divine dynosphere. And just as you have heard that Antichrist will come, in fact, at this present time, many Antichrists exist. For which reason we have come to know that it is last favorable time to use the divine dynosphere. Verse 19, these antichrists separated from us. Nevertheless, they were not really part of us. For if they were part of us, and they were not, they would have remained with us, but they did not. Now we have the elliptical purpose clause beginning with Allah. Well, it is correctly translated, but. Uh, they went out, you'll notice, is in italics in the King James Version. It is not in the original. However, the ellipsis demands that it be inserted, and so correctly it is placed in italics. They went out to describe what's happening uh, to these uh, people, oh, and what it means is given to us in the aorist, active, indicative uh, from the verb uh, ex ercomai. E-X-E-R-C-H-O-M-A-I. Erkomai means to come or to go. X means out, and it's in the use of as a prefix, so it means to uh, come out or to go out. This is uh, a, a culminative aorist regarding action uh, in its entirety, but regarding it from the uh, existing result. And uh, the active voice of uh, believers uh, residing in the uh, cosmic system uh, who are antichrists uh, produce the action of this verb. And the indicative mood is declarative for the reality of believers who lose their number one priority, which is Bible doctrine. And so we will translate it, putting a little parenthesis here. We will say, but they have reacted and separated from us. That translates... Uh, uh, this uh, in its in the contextual uh, sense, all right? And then we have uh, Hina again, H-I-N-A, for the final uh, purpose clause to, pro per to portray or demonstrate an aim, a goal, or a result, and translated in order that. So they, uh, but they have reacted and separated from us in order that. Then we have uh, the aorist passive subjunctive of fan ero'o. P-H-A-N-E-R-O-O. And this is the constantive aorist tense, contemplating the action of the verb in its entirety. Reaction, separation of the Antichrist expresses what they are. What they have done is separate. What they are is the reason for their separation, and uh, this is important. Uh, reversionistic, apostate objects uh, of basic impersonal love on the part of the faithful believer only, they are very unattractive in what they have done. The passive voice, the subject of the action of the verb, believers in the cosmic system receive uh, the uh, uh, being set in a clear light or manifestation or in the sense of the context, uh, expose. They are exposed. Best way to translate the passive voice. Um, this tells us what they are. The, the truth of what they are is now given to us. And the subjunctive mood, a pot a potential implying uh, the contingency. They don't have to be this way, but their volition causes them. So we have, but they have reacted and separated from us in order that they may be exposed. Then we have the causal conjunction hoti, because. And then we have the negative uk, plus the nominative subject from the adjective pas, and so they were not all. And then uh, we'll go back to the uh, the uh, ek plus ego, which says. They were not all part of us. So we have, they separated from us, 
However, they were not really part of us. For if they had been part of us, and they were not, they would have remained with us, but they did not. But they have reacted and separated from us in order that they might be exposed, because not all believers are a part of us. Let's take a few uh, notes of application here. One, this is an alert verse. In other words, it prepares believers who are growing believers to whom this portion was addressed, the paideia, the growing believers, to the reality of people testing. Two, some of the nicest, some of the sweetest, some of the most personable people you will ever meet in a local church. Uh, and some of the people with whom you will have fellowship in a local church are going to someday or other disappoint you. And when they disappoint you, they are going to become a test for your own spiritual priorities. Therefore, this verse is given to remind every believer residing in the divine dynasty that you are going to be testing in the area of people's distraction. And many, of course, will fail to pass this test. Um, I don't know where uh, there is a greater uh, area of testing than in the local church. Three, this is called a people distraction. We talked in the very beginning about the distraction of sin. I write unto you that you do not receive distraction through sinning. Well, this is a people distraction, and the design that God has in allowing this to take place in your life is to test your priorities. Your priorities inside the divine dinosphere. And the question, will you maintain your positive volition priorities in the face of pressure. And here's the point. If you pass this test, you will have accelerated momentum as far as your spiritual adulthood is concerned. If you fail the test, of course, you will enter into the category of those who are antichrists. Four, remember that because you are friendly with or attracted to some believers, you must be aware of the possibility that this believer will exert some undue influence upon you whereby they will cause you to react so that Bible doctrine will no longer be your number one priority. Five, therefore you must be very careful of personal love, which is attraction, attraction love for any member of the human race. Personal love must never overcome your number one priority, which is love for God. And personal love for God means also personal love for the Word of God, which is Bible doctrine. Six, when a pastor teacher is consistently teaching the Word of God, when the pastor teacher is consistently teaching Bible doctrine, the inevitable result will be that there is going to always be a division between the positive crowd and the negative crowd. People, in other words, will always be coming and going. But the negative crowd are people who are preoccupied with themselves. They are preoccupied uh, with uh, what is happening to them. And uh, with this, their emphasis is on experience. Some years ago, I had an assistant pastor 
and his wife, who came from a local school that was not in this church, as I came here, hired by the board, should never be, the pastor, if he wants any assistance, should hire the assistance himself. They should be totally responsible to him. It is not the board's responsibility. The board will authorize the payment of salary for an assistant if they wish, but it's entirely up to the pastor. But anyway, he's re in college. I don't know anybody arrogant than a college student, unless it's a Bible school student. And they're both uh, very, very arrogant. And um, it so happened that uh, these, uh, this husband and wife were writing notes to each other during uh, Bible classes. And they, in, in error, left them in one of the hymnals. And I was straightening out the hymnals one day and ran across these. Uh, I knew everybody sits in the same place all the time. You know that. Nobody ever varies more than two seats in any direction. It depends if somebody then steals their seats from them. And uh, uh, besides, I also knew the handwriting and I remember uh, uh, the wife had written, uh, he's not saying that in love. And the answer was, uh, definitely not, exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point. Now, there are two uh, observations that I must make on, I made at that time in the first place. Uh, what kind of omniscience did those arrogant little SOBs, the sons and daughters of Belial, have to know what, I, what was my attitude in saying what I said. That, is, that was only known to God and me, what my motivation was. Secondly, regardless of what my motivation was, what business was it of theirs? It had no bearing on them whatsoever. They were a thorn in my flesh, and I put them for a semester, and, uh, but uh, that was uh, the end of it. And I thought that they both wanted to be missionaries someday, and I think God help the poor people to whom they're going to be missionaries. I really uh, feel for them. But uh, the whole thing uh, was a subjective experience, you see. Uh, the point was that uh, if I was teaching the Word of God and if it was true, fine, uh, uh, believe it. If it was something that was subjective and if I was not saying it in love, that was n totally irrelevant to them. That was between the Lord and me, and he'd take care of me on that basis. He would discipline me for that. I'd get my comeuppance, and it didn't mean a thing to them, you see. It was not their responsibility to evaluate or to come up with some kind of a thing. But, you see, they were, part of the, they were a part of this group that was coming along that everything was you got to love everybody, and love was a gushing uh, experience of falling all over people and hugging and back and forth. Now... Nothing wrong with that, uh, as, a, as maybe an expression, but love is basically a mental attitude, and how it's expressed depends on different people. The point is that when the pastor does uh, teach the Word of God, there are those people who are going to react to his personality, to his delivery, to his uh, methodology, and so forth, who, whatever he says, they're going to react against. They just are going to say, uh, they're going to be negative toward it. And uh, these people can become troublemakers. Uh, and uh, it, tragically, it has uh, happened again and again and again. And uh, there have been more church splits which have come because of Absaloms at the door uh, in the form of assistant pastors or associate pastors or some who have been on the pastoral staff who have... Uh, uh, felt that they had been suffering from undelivered sermons, they could certainly do a much better job than the, uh, than the senior pastor, whatever you want to call him, uh, is doing. And uh, therefore, they, uh, they drew around themselves uh, small congregations of people who were loyal to them and not to the local church or to doctrine. Uh, there have been Sunday school teachers who have done that very same thing in large churches, there have been Sunday school teachers who have drawn whole classes around themselves and they made their choices uh, to be loyal to the Sunday school teacher and not to the pastor of the local church. Um, I know that at Baraka Church in Houston, uh, there was a medical doctor who had a Bible class for many, many years. And uh, one day he got upset with uh, Colonel Thiem and uh, left the church and his whole class went with him and they started another church in town 
which lasted for about four years, and then it was down to zero, zero, point zero, zero. The, oh, no, there were two people. The doctor and his wife were still there, and he was teaching and she was listening, but nobody else was there. Uh, it, had, it had demonstrated the fact. Uh, 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 and the truth. But this is not only true there, it's been down through the years, uh, a true uh, situation. And there was one time when the colonel uh, made a statement that he lived to regret. He said that uh, uh, only a military man or a former military man could really become uh, a, uh, a loyal assistant. And so he hired Colonel McConnell to be his assistant. Uh, and uh, he never had as bad an assistant in his whole life. I'm delighted to see that once in a while because military doesn't mean a thing, good or bad. They're just another person. But uh, it, was, uh, it was this man who became so aggravated and so uh, 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 such a dissenter that he uh, sent letters to, he, he stole the mailing list from Baraka Church and sent letters to everyone accusing the colonel of some despicable things. And before that letter arrived into our midst, I got one because I've obviously been on the list. He was dead, the sin unto death. He was gone, just like that. He was gone. I, you know, had the colonel still around. You know, that was that was 15 years ago, and the old man is still teaching the word of God. And Colonel McConnell's in heaven, and he knows by now that he made a great mistake. I have a feeling he learned very rapidly. But you see, uh, there are people uh, who will be uh, divided uh, on the basis of, of a Bible doctrine, uh, which, uh, and, and the pastor-teacher uh, teaching the Word of God is bound to divide people. And the question comes, are you going to follow people who are attractive into apostasy, or are you going to follow doctrine into spiritual adulthood? Seven, if you choose people over doctrine, your momentum will be destroyed, and God's purpose from your li for your life will be set aside, and uh, discipline will be your portion. Eight, the other side of it is uh, uh, that uh, when you allow someone else to become your soul for you, when people make your decisions for you, that is, you see, you allow people, you follow people, they're making your decision for you then uh, you have no priorities of your own and you are influenced by people. You're a weak, sniveling underdog. And so uh, they separated from us. However, they were not really part of us, for if they had been part of us and they were not, they would have remained with us, but they did not. But they have reacted and separated from us in order that they might be exposed, because not all believers are part of us. And that concludes this paragraph, uh, and now we're ready to move into paragraph number 3, verses 20 to 29, which is the conflict of the two dinospheres. The conflict of the world system, the cosmic system, the darkness system, which is one, the first of the three areas under satanic control that we're discussing. And, uh, and the divine sphere of power, divine dinosphere, which is under the control of God. And verse 20 begins with the ultimate defense against apostasy and distraction. And that is the interlocking of gates 1, 2, 3, and 4, and your continued spiritual momentum throughout spiritual adulthood. And so uh, we begin with uh, the conjunction uh, uh, but. And uh, we're going to translate it in spite of the fact or in spite of these things because this translates the conjunction of contrast. In spite of these things. In spite of the fact that there are people who are defecting. In spite of the fact that there are uh, believers who are unfaithful. There are believers who don't care about Bible doctrine. In spite of the fact that you're going through testing, you have to know something. You. And this is uh, the nominative plural from the personal pronoun su, S-U. In the second person, it refers to believers who are still inside the divine dinosphere, whose number one priority remains Bible doctrine, and uh, uh, who are facing the tests 
but their volition remains the same. They are not going to give in to the distraction. You have is the uh, present active indicative from the verb echo, E-C-H-O, which is to have and to hold. This is a perfective present tense for uh, that which has come to be in the past but has a current or present reality. You see, in the, in the, the, in the, you went positive in the past toward Bible doctrine, and in spite of the distractions, in spite of the tests, in spite of the temptations, you remain positive at, uh, at this period of time. Uh, and uh, because of this, you have something which we'll talk about in the context, the active voice. You have produced the action by rejecting the distractions, by going through the temptations and saying no by means of your volition, and as a result, maintaining your momentum. Indicative mood, a directive, uh, pardon me, a declaration of the fact that uh, you are utilizing the power supply that God has given to you inside the divine dynasphere, God the Holy Spirit, who is described by these words in the King James Version, an unction, which is the accusative singular direct object from this word, charisma, C-H-R-I-S-M-A. And charisma does mean anointing. There is no definite article which emphasizes the quality of the noun. And uh, the anointing refers to gate number one of the divine dynasphere, which is the filling or the control of God the Holy Spirit. All believers are indwelt by God the Holy Spirit, but believers who maintain positive volition are retaining the control of God the Holy Spirit. They are they, therefore, they are consistently controlled by God the Holy Spirit. You keep on having an, an unction uh, or an anointing uh, from the Holy One. Preposition apo plus the ablative singular of hagias plus with a definite article which is correctly translated from the ultimate source of the Holy One. A reference to the Lord Jesus Christ who in John 14 through 16 promises to send another helper, uh, Parakaleo. Uh, John 14, verses 16, 17, and 26. John 15, 26. And John 16, verses 7 through 14. In spite of the fact that believers are defecting, you growing believers keep on having an anointing of the Holy Spirit from the source of the Holy One, that is, the Lord Jesus Christ. And the connective use of Kai, you, perfect tense of uh, 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 Oida, you know, a perfect used as a present tense for knowledge in the past, which keep on being your portion. You keep on knowing uh, Oida, O-I-D-A. This is a retroactive progressive present, denoting action that has begun in the past with the current uh, results. Uh, that you know something today because of something you have studied. Again, active voice, the believer produces it. You keep on knowing all things. Uh, it is all things is simply the uh, accusative plural uh, from uh, neuter plural uh, from pas, which uh, in the neuter means all things, and it refers to Bible doctrine. You know all doctrine, that is pertinent doctrines, for your spiritual advance. You don't know everything there is to know, but you know all that's necessary for your spiritual uh, advance. And so you have gone through spiritual childhood, and you are now somewhere between uh, gate number five, personal love for God, and gate number eight, which is the ultimate goal, and that is spiritual maturity. Uh, you are either in spiritual self-esteem, or you are in spiritual uh, uh, adolescence, uh, or you are in spiritual maturity, uh, uh, which is spiritual uh, autonomy. Uh, you are in one of these areas or between them somewhere. Uh, and uh, you have not allowed yourself to become distracted. And you are on the way. You have momentum. 
Uh, you have not allowed sin to uh, become uh, the distraction. And uh, uh, once you are in that area, remember that uh, the devil is utilizing everything he has inside this world system to seek to distract you from the truth. Um, once you're in a cosmic system, you're under his control. And he, he doesn't have to worry a great deal about you. But once you're in here, you are now moving toward the place where you have maximum spiritual impact upon the world. Because when you get to spiritual maturity, you're going to have fantastic spiritual impact. For the solution to the problems that are found in this world system are not found in Christian activism or in Christian uh, uh, degeneracy of some kind. Uh, morality or any of that stuff. The answer to all the problems of the world system are spiritual answers, and spiritual answers become yours when you reach spiritual maturity and are utilizing Bible doctrine to the maximum, exploiting grace to the maximum, and taking advantage of the power system of God to the maximum. And uh, so consistently throughout this time, you have two questions to answer. Um, first of all, what is your motivation? And secondly, what are your priorities? And this is going to be consistently an issue, as I said the other day. It's constantly going to be an issue with you. You don't have a once and for all answer to this question. You are going to be hit, being hit with it every day, and not only every day, several times a day. You start off the day, and you're heading down, and you well, start the day at the bottom. Yeah, because most people do start the day at the bottom uh, of everything. And um, you start down here, and you make a decision to make sure that you're confessed uh, sin and you're filled with the Holy Spirit. No sooner do you make that decision when Satan and his uh, uh, host have strategic meeting and uh, uh, he decides whether it's going to be the world system, the old sin nature, or a combination of the two uh, added to a specific demon who's been assigned to you or to someone else uh, who can become a people test to you so that you're going to face throughout any given day a number of occasions uh, to test your priorities, to test your motivation. And uh, every time you make a choice uh, to stick with Bible doctrine, to apply a Bible doctrine uh, that you know, or to uh, you recognize maybe you do allow a mental attitude sin to come in here, and you decide to utilize rebound, and you get back into fellowship, that you are defeating the devil. You are doing what it says uh, in uh, resisting the devil, and he will flee from you. For every time you resist the devil, he goes back, but he only goes back to have another meeting to determine what will be the next thing that he's going to use against you. And uh, uh, what he wants to do is to keep you from Bible doctrine, uh, either in your own soul or from Bible class, wherever it may be. Uh, and uh, uh, his, uh, uh, he's going to keep you from a Bible doctrine. Uh, wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? It says the psalmist, uh, uh, Ezra writes this uh, 119th Psalm. Wherewithal, how or with what shall a young man cleanse his way? Answer, by taking heed thereto according to your word. And then uh, two verses later he adds, Your word have I hid in my soul that I might not sin against you. And so it's going to be someone calling you on the telephone. Uh, some proposition being made to you uh, or some uh, uh, somebody that comes across your path who is uh, uh, totally uh, uh, going to send you out into left field. And um, uh, it's, it is amazing, beloved, how believers who uh, have been here have had some of the most stupid, flimsy excuses for uh, exiting the divine dinosphere that you have ever heard in your life. Uh, uh, but there's really only the two questions. What is your motivation? What are your priorities? And if you're not honest with yourself, you will not be honest with the Lord or anyone else, and you are therefore going to strap it on to yourself, and you're going to try to strap it on God just as you're trying to strap it on everyone else. I am spiritual, but in reality, you are not. So uh, we uh, have a supernatural power. We will be talking about this power very shortly. Uh, uh, we're going to go back and take a brief look at uh, two passages in uh, the early part of Ephesians. Uh, but we'll just take a brief look now and come to it again later on. Uh, turn back to Ephesians uh, chapter 1, just a moment.
In Ephesians chapter 1, we have the longest prayer that you've ever heard from the Apostle Paul, not from pastors. They pray around the world, but uh, the Apostle Paul, uh, in verse 17, tells us, I keep asking that God, uh, the God, our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you, then there are a number of things that he asked God the Father to provide for believers in Ephesus. These believers who, uh, remember, we studied in Ephesians chapter 6, these believers who were facing some very serious problems. They were facing all kinds of attacks uh, in their uh, marriage, in their family relationships, in their employer employer relationships. But he's going to summarize them all when he says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. That is, rest in the omnipotence of God. And so he says uh, uh, in this prayer that these people may know some things, but when he gets down to verse 19, you may know something else, you see, that you may know his incomparably great power for us who believe. The word for is who pair means on behalf of us who believe. That power is like the working of his mighty strength, which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms far above all rule or principalities and powers, uh, all powers and dominions and every title that can be given, not only in this present age, but also in the one to come. And so interesting that he uses several different words uh, for power uh, in, this, uh, in this passage. He uses an uh, ergo, uh, he uses a uh, krateo, he uses eskuo, uh, all of these things uh, he uses. Uh, but uh, he, uh, he uses also the, the word for the omnipotence of God, dunamis. So there are four Greek words which are, going to, which are translated power in different uh, contexts. We're going to look at all of them in more detail. You see the point there? He prayed that the believers might understand something, that they might comprehend something. And that is that they have available to them all of the power which was used in resurrecting Jesus Christ from the dead and setting him above every principality and every power, above every name that is named. In other words, beloved, the option of the Holy Spirit or the anointing of the Holy Spirit is a fantastic power which is available to believers to live the Christian way of life. Now, can you just imagine what it's like? Let's go back, let's go back to the last context. Here are employers and employees. Here are employees who are working on a job. And what are they doing? They are functioning under human power. How do we know that? Well, anybody who is given eye service is functioning under human power. He's using a human method to get ahead. Anyone who is working uh, who, for, the, uh, for the appearance of, of the boss is using human power. What a stupid idiot using human power to get ahead when there is available to that person on the job divine power. What how stupid it is for a husband and a wife to functioning together in a home situation in which two different personalities, two different wills, two different persons are seeking to live together uh, under one roof, a home relation, and utilizing that human power when God has made a omnipotence. How can it be that parents are trying to rear children under the print of human power, human ability, human perspicacity, human life, and there is available to the power that resurrects Jesus Christ from the dead? And how is it that there are eight beliefs who are trying to stand against the world, the flesh, and the death in their own authority when God has made available to them an unction from a high, that anointing from a high, and the power of the Holy Spirit? For our Lord Jesus Christ, his humanity did not use his own deity. He uh, did not use his own deity. He used the omnipotence of God, the Holy Spirit, in order to superhuman life he lived. And that was available to us today. And how stupid to use human power. How foolish to rely on ability. We will divine power by the two strategies in Ephesians chapter 3, which we will look at. We're not going to spend time in it. So we'll look back now and continue with 1 John chapter 2. Verse 10. The steps of doctrine, momentum, the power to live, this is only inside of divine doctrine. So he says, uh, uh, I have not written you because you do not know truth. I have written is the aorist active indicative of the G-R-A-P-H-O, uh, referring to the context of the passage of that, I mean the material that he's writing here in First John. Uh, I have not written unto you, Hoti, because you do not know truth. All right? You know the professor Vida used as a uh, perfect uh, and truly A-L-E-T-H-A, which has to do with He is saying something to you because of uh, doctrine. 
right to learn people around here who are in the internet. And we're all just horrible days and days of the same thing. As there is a more and more secure to ensure they be a good execution of my son and devil, I like all trouble Satan. Do you do it? You know, but I have here a question because you have no. Um, it has given in the eye of a sister. There is, uh, I have not written unto it because you know, Doc, but because you have come. Uh, uh, the is not the divine fear for reason. His own will and the disability is responsible for his forces. He may not be a cause of their fear, subject to our bills, who work as devil. And so they should bear in mind that they are subject to the authentic lips. They are lost to the absence of the documentary, especially of the circumstances in which you have. That means to maintain the power system has given to you the power of the uh, Bible and, uh, and the control of the and so quickly grow a minute of this uh, power. Paul points is a believer in the Christian music. He claims I have come to know him and do not execute fulfill or obey his mandates. Those are the mandates remain left. The one is I have to truth is him. Uh, and uh, the indefinite pronoun is, we may uh, translate, what type of person is? What type of person is? Uh, so uh, look like this. Two E-U-T-E-S. Sutes. What sort of person is the liar? The one who's living the lie. Uh, not the one who uh, can't handle truth. I mean, 844. That he, so he, uh, he uses uh, I may, uh, which is except, or no one else but. No one else but, and then who is it? He that denieth. Well, the word denieth is arnomai. A-R-N-E-O-M-A-I. Arnomai means to repudiate or to disown. We'll